the topic of my speech today uh, is successful failure. I want you to imbibe, understand what it means. Successful failure. Prima facie, it looks like an oxymoron. A failure cannot be successful. And when somebody is successful, he can't be called failure. Steve Jobs got thrown out of his own company, Apple. It wasn't called Apple by that time until he came back to conquer it as the CEO of Apple. He got thrown out of it after working in a garage, in a shed, two people. Abraham Lincoln lost every single election until he became the 16th president of the United States of America. Every single election. He also got kicked out of school. His mother famously wrote that letter to the teacher saying, you can kick out my child out of the school, but I will tell you that he will make a success out of his life. Bill Gates was a Harvard dropout. Bill Gates is why we are interacting today on computers. He is the owner of a billion dollar company, Microsoft, which is earning millions by the day. Tagore failed his matriculation examination multiple times. Rabindranath Tagore, who would understand that he would write Gitanjali and win on Nobel Prize? Albert Einstein could not speak properly until he was nine years of age. Albert Einstein, the man who gave us E is equal to MC squared. These are all successful failures. Because each one of these gentlemen and the ladies learned from their failures and made tremendous success out of their failures. I am a story of what they call chasing dreams. I have been chasing my dreams right from my childhood. When I grew up, my mother wanted me to become a doctor. Eventually, I also ended up becoming a doctor because I liked it. So I sat for the exam. I flunked the exam. That night was one of the most difficult nights of my life where the dreams of 20 years were shattered by one single examination by falling short of three marks. Falling short of three marks, I sat, I cried, I cribbed, the world had fallen on my head, my world had turned upside down, I could not end up becoming a doctor. I was a failure. Until somebody came the next day and told me, well, you should probably think about writing the IS exam, it's all right if you couldn't become a doctor. At which point I looked at him with such great anger and I told him, are you serious? I'm trying to console me. I have the world fallen on my head. My world has turned upside down and here you are. You're coming and telling me you should crack the IS exam. Are you a moron? I couldn't crack this exam. I'm a failure. And then eventually the next year I did qualify for the medical entrance exam. I made it to become a doctor. Dream that I had so aspired for for the first 18 to 20 years of my life. While in college, I understood that this was probably not my calling. It was a very tough decision. My friends told me, I think you guys, you know, you have lost it. You seem to have lost it completely. You're a doctor. You can't think about writing the civil services. Those days, nobody prepared. And when I was sitting in class, I would probably end up reading psychology and literature books. And my friends and my colleagues and my batchmates would probably laugh saying, he's lost it. He's reading psychology in a medical college. He's reading literature, studying literature in a medical college. He's probably lost it big time. He'll flunk both these exams. He won't get into the IS for sure. And he certainly will flunk the medical exams, the yearly exams. Dear friends, I did not flunk any of the exams. I did pretty well in college and eventually qualified the Union Public Service Commission exams and ended up becoming an IPS officer. Why did I not stop there? That was probably something that I did not stop myself at. I wrote the exam again. I wrote the exam again and ended up becoming uh, an IAS officer joining the Covert Indian Administrative Service which to this day remains one of the most difficult exams to crack in the world. But here I am in front of you, a living example of a successful failure who learned from his failures, who gave it back to the world when the world said, you do not have it in you to qualify.
you do not have it in you to beat this world, to beat all adversity. I gave it back to them and said, I'm going to prove that I am a successful man who learns from his failures. Some people will call me a rolling stone. I like to call myself a rolling stone who gathered a lot of moss. We generally keep hearing, rolling stones do not gather moss. But with God's grace, I have gathered my share of moss. There's a lot of moss in me. And I shall not stop. I aspire to be an author one day and probably eventually I will end up becoming one. That is what my life story is. We all know this. What are the ingredients of success, hard work, passion, commitment, discipline, positivity, patience, confidence, learning, unlearning, relearning, and leaving your comfort zone? This is all something that you're all aware of. But my point is to draw your attention to why 99% of the people in this world in relative terms fail. Why do people fail? People fail primarily because there is a fear of failure. Now, fear is a very evolutionary trait. When we were early men or women, when we dwelled in caves and we, assuming, came out of a cave and we saw a lion or a tiger, our first response would be fear to save our lives. Because if we did not fear, we wouldn't go back to the cave, we wouldn't climb in the tree, we wouldn't do stuff that would save our lives. One of the primary reasons most people fail is that there is a fear of failure. There will be people who will tell you, sometimes your own significant others who will say, you can't do it. I fear that you will fail. So what? Tread out, tell the world, but first tell yourself that it is okay to fail. It's only because of failure that tomorrow you will probably be successful. Remove the fear of failure from your minds, boys and girls. Distractions. A lot of us are distracted from our goals, from our objectives. You must have seen this wonderful example of an You are targeting a particular goal in your life and there will be thousands of distractions. That goal shall elude you as long as you focus on the distractions. There has to be noise and there has to be signal. 90% of the world is full of noise. 10% is the signal. Become very discreet in picking up the signals. Don't get distracted. A lack of planning. If you're failing to plan, you're planning to fail. Always plan. Anything that you do in your life deserves a thorough assessment and a planning procedure. If you don't do that, you are planning to fail. Again, 99% of us give up too soon. Just when success is right there within your reach, invariably, your demons overcome you and you give up. Do not give up too soon. Keep fighting to the end because at the end of it, there is success waiting to touch and kiss your feet. Lack of self-confidence. One of the primary reasons why people fail is because they do not have confidence in your ability. Never let anybody question your self-confidence. Never let anybody question the fact that you are a supremely confident person who has achievement orientation? A very important question that you must all ask yourself, and all of us as human beings should ask ourselves, is why do you want to be successful? What is in it for us to be successful? A successful doctor, a successful engineer, a successful bureaucrat, a successful technician, a successful wonderful man like uh, Mr. Lotus, a successful academician, a successful researcher. Why? There are some basic motivations of every human being on why he or she deserves or wants to be successful. It could be fame, it could be power. To each man, power is different. It could be social recognition, it could be money, or it could be the great abundant opportunities that success beckons at your feet. 
But more important than why you are successful, or why you want to be successful, is the intention of why you want to be successful. If your intention is correct, ladies and gentlemen, the universe will and shall conspire to your success. Success versus failure is always how you see it. What you see as failure, I could see as a stepping stone for your success. What I saw as failure back in the day when I could not crack the CET, I eventually made that a stepping stone of success for me in my career. Successful failures never discriminate between privileged and underprivileged. Each one of us has a different journey of life. Each one of us has different challenges. There is not a single person in this wonderful gathering who does not have a challenge of his or her own. Each one of us has had our own respective battles to fight, our own respective challenges to overcome. Do not consider yourself privileged or underprivileged because of the battles that you see some other person winning or losing. Never ever compare yourself with somebody you think is privileged or underprivileged. Each human being is a story of its own. Failure and the suffering that comes with it is a reality of life. Invariably, we are not taught, socialized for this failure. When you fail an exam, when you flunk something in school, some of us get a thrashing at home. If you fail a semester here, you'll get a good thrashing at home. Your friends will look down upon you. Your socialization is not conditioned. You are not conditioned to adapt and accustom yourself to failure. But you will have failures. So therefore, please learn and understand that there is going to be failure in life. There is going to be suffering in life. But how you evolve yourself after that is the key to success or permanent failure. Every successful human being that you see in front of you has the capacity to take risks, has the capacity to dare to dream. You're the only person in your own life who can convince yourself that these dreams can be put into reality and they are doable. Never fail to dream and never fail to work towards your dreams. The world is changing extremely rapidly. This is a changing world daughter. If somebody does not change and is not dynamic with it, that person will be waylaid. The world does not wait. It's like a fast moving train which shall not wait for anybody. If you don't accustom yourself to this change and dynamic behavior, you are in for trouble. Adapt. Our bodies, our system is evolutionarily accustomed to adapt. Now I am wearing a suit and a pocket square and a tie. Hundreds of centuries back, this probably would not be the dress that human beings would wear. I would probably come in a uh, lion hide or something and, and, and you know, you would all be wearing something or the other. But we have adapted and come to this pinnacle of evolution. Your bodies are accustomed, your mind is accustomed to adapt, change, keep changing, do not restrict yourselves to things that you have been taught. Unlearn and relearn. Surround yourself with positivity. There is a lot of negativity. We invariably attract a lot of negativity in this world. But dear friends, inculcate and surround yourself with a lot of positivity. Negativity is a disease which spreads very viciously, very vociferously. Please address that. When you are in a negative gathering, please tell yourself, Shut it down. Do not let that negativity get into you. Do not let that negativity creep in and eat you from within. Engage with positive people. Engage with positive thoughts. Engage with positive self-talk. Kill your demons is extremely important. Each one of us has a demon inside. Unless you kill your demon, the human being inside you is not going to reach the potential that that human being could. Each one of you has a demon inside. I have a demon inside. But we have to kill our demons. Learn, deal with them. This world, like I said, is a fast, evolving, rapidly changing, dynamic world order. 
it is going to be tech driven. Technology is going to be the bedrock. Technology is the new wheel of this century. This is not the Stone Age, neither is it the Iron Age, neither is it the Fire Age. This is the tech age. Today, what you're studying in this wonderful institution is probably going to be obsolete by the next five years. The watches that we keep wearing, the, the, the phones that we have, the laptop machines and the, the systems that we have are getting obsolete as we speak. Please adapt to this technology. Please adapt to this new changing world order, which is basically based on tech. Kindness pays. Kindness always pays. Not a single deed of kindness goes unnoticed. We are all conditioned and trained to be kind. And to end my talk here, I would like to tell you that this new era, this new generation is of four eyes. You must inform yourself and others. You must inspire yourself and others. You must interact with yourself and others and you must innovate. This world and the next is going to be a huge importance towards innovation. If you don't do that, it's going to be a problem. So my friends, I will conclude my speech by saying that you must always realize that every success story is based on the bedrock of failures. It is important to be a successful failure rather than a successful human being. Learn from your failures, conquer your demons, go out there, conquer the world. God bless you all.